Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is actually going off the video I just done yesterday about the US and the debt. And I mentioned in that video, I'm going to do this reaction. And again, I saw it and I was like, actually, I do want to see this because it's something that I don't really know the in depth details. I know kind of the, the reasoning and it's because of inflation and stuff. But the in depth details, I don't know why and why it happens and just all this kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm just going to check this out. I hope you guys are going to enjoy. This wasn't actually suggested. This was literally just me saying it. So maybe this video won't actually do that good. But yeah, hope you guys are going to enjoy this one. I'm just going to check it out straight away. It's by Wonder Why again, a channel that I really do enjoy seeing. But yeah, quick shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter links in the description for those. And my second channel links are all there. And also for my Patreon. I've just made it. It's new. And yeah, I have really appreciate the support on it so far. But the links are there for people who want to see that it's... Um, there's like Patreon only videos on there and just stuff like that really but yeah links are all there for all those sort of socials and Patreon etc but let's get into this one and let's see what what this video is going to talk about then. Have you ever wondered why countries can't just print more money to pay off their debts or to feed the homeless or to fix unemployment or any other issue for that matter? Now this might seem like a rather silly question but I think it's one of those questions that people might be too embarrassed to ask but there's no shortage of people yeah. wondering. It's a good point. It's one of those things that people will be like, okay, it's going to sound stupid why I ask this, but I don't actually know why. The short answer can be summed up in one word. Inflation. Inflation is defined as a persistent substantial rise in the general level of prices related to an increase in the volume of money resulting in a loss of value of currency. But I'll get to that. First though, we need to establish exactly what money is. Now this may seem obvious, but something that you need to understand is that money has absolutely no intrinsic value. What that means is that money in itself has no actual value, it's only considered valuable because it can buy things. But if you were stranded okay. on a desert island, money yeah. would be totally useless. It's true, it's a man-made thing. Only had it's a man-made thing. Money is not actually one of those things that sort of like... That's why I always sort of feel like... Can money actually buy you... Ha I'm going to move up here because I think this side's going to have a lot of it, more interesting things. Um, can money actually buy you happiness or is it just one of those things that you sort of think can make you happy but it can't because it's not actually real like it's real because it can help you get better things and all that kind of stuff but it's not actually like something that humans are like used to like they're not programmed to sort of understand I don't know I get I don't know it's hard to explain but it, I see what you mean it's got no sort of value when you're stuck in a situation say you're on like a sinking boat I remember in the Titanic he was like I'll pay you to kill Jack I don't, know, I don't know how I got to Titanic at this point, but like, he's just like, why would you give me my money now? Help me out. I'm literally going to die on this ship. And it's just like, it's true. It only means something when you're sort of able to actually use it. It has value because we believe it has value. Like at this point, an apple would be more, have more intrinsic value than money, than two million. If you're stuck on this island, it would. And it's just a scary sort of thing. This is called the Tinkerbell effect. Something I learned about from Vsauce. Oh, shout the out Tinkerbell Vsauce. effect is used to describe something that only exists because we believe. Also, look. I'm sorry, I'm pausing it a lot. I shall move. I'm gonna move the camera back down. Fuck it. <laughs> sorry for this really messed up start. I want to see how the YouTube looked back then. Bro, look at that. Bro, this is wild. This is YouTube back in the day. What the hell? It's so different. Effect. Something I learned about from Vsauce. The Tinkerbell effect is used to describe something that only exists because we believe it exists. And this is the case with money. Hypothetically speaking, if people suddenly started to believe that money had no value, it wouldn't have value. Yeah. Of course, it wasn't always this way. Money has been around for millennia, and when it was first used, it was in the form of commodity money. Things were traded that had actual value and uses, like gold, salt, spices, oh. horses and weapons, <laughs> as well as precious metals such as gold and silver, oh, which technically go. don't have any intrinsic value either, but due to their rarity, they're almost universally accepted as currency. Then we have representative money. Since carrying around everything you own can be difficult, representative money makes more sense. Basically, you give your gold to a bank and they keep it safe for you, and in return they give you a piece of paper acknowledging that you own that gold. These pieces of paper can therefore be used as money as anyone can go and redeem the gold at any time. But today, almost every country in the world uses fiat money. Fiat money requires faith and trust in the government that their money will have value. If we use a relatively young country as an example, the United States has gone through all three monetary systems within 200 years. Bro, I'm just deeping it. it money doesn't make sense. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. Like, it's just... I'm just sort of thinking, it's just like... <laughs> If one day we just decided money wasn't important, and like he said, people just universally agree it's not important, it would be worthless. 
I find it crazy how we've created this thing. It's like created money and like we can like the more money you have, the more things you can buy and just all this stuff. It's weird. It is just weird. I can't really explain what is in my head right now, like what I'm thinking, but it's just it makes me think, it really does. In 1792, when the United States stopped using European money, the Coinage Act of 1972 brought the inception of the US dollar. The US dollar was originally in the form of commodity money in the form of gold, silver and copper coins. Okay. The coins were actually made from real gold, silver and copper, and the value of the metal that made the coins were exactly equal to their face value. Oh, wow. The country Wait, then moved what? on to a mixture of commodity and representative it's money smart, with the 1900 the Gold Standard Act. The government issued dollar bills which could be exchanged for gold at any time. Gold standard is a type of representative money that many countries used at the time. A cool this was an effective way to accurately calculate the exchange rate between countries. For example, if one gram of gold costs one pound in Britain and one dollar fifty in America, <laughs> then you can easily deduce that one pound must equal one dollar fifty. Okay. Gold coins were discontinued and the silver was removed from the other coins, effectively ending commodity money in the United States. In 1971, Richard Nixon officially abandoned the gold standard and the US moved on to fiat money. So today, money isn't backed by gold or anything else of value for that matter. So back to the question at hand. Basic economics tells us that an increase in supply results in fall in demand and therefore a fall in price. So the more money in the economy, the lower the value of each dollar, meaning other countries can purchase more dollars in exchange for their currency. A second supply and demand graph shows why this leads to a rise in prices. More money in the economy causes a shift in the demand curve for goods and services, but since this isn't matched by an increase in economic output, prices must rise. Look at it this way. If the government printed a million dollars and posted it to everyone in the country, causing everyone to go out and buy a sports car, but there's only a finite number of sports cars in the country, so the logical thing to do is to increase the price of a sports car. Yeah. The demand, if we right? use an analogy to demonstrate this, imagine there's four people on a desert island, they each have 10 pieces of fruit. All fruits are considered equal in value. Now imagine they discover a whole forest of apple trees. The nominal value of apples has increased because there's more of them, but the actual value of an apple yeah. has gone down due to an yeah, increase in supply. Therefore, it now costs 10 apples Good for one banana yeah. since demand for apples is low but high for bananas. Just to clarify, in this analogy, the people represent different countries, the fruit, their respective currency, and the apple tree is the printed money. Okay. But it's not just because of economic theory that we know printing too much money is a bad idea. There's several examples throughout recent history. The most recent example is Zimbabwe, who in 2008 suffered extremely high inflation due to printing money. This was the result of some awful decisions by President Mugabe. When the economy took a turn for the worst, Wait, sorry, Zimbabwe, who in 2008 suffered extremely high inflation due to printing money. This was the result of some awful decisions by President Mugabe. When the economy took a turn for the worst, Mugabe printed more money to pay government expenditure. This caused inflation to skyrocket and in mid-November 2008, Zimbabwe's inflation peaked at... Actually wait, hold on a second. First I need to provide some context. Inflation in the United States is around 2%. Economists generally agree that inflation levels of 1-3% to are optimum. Okay. First world countries inflation rates today range from 0 to 5%. A country is said to enter hyperinflation when their inflation levels exceed 50%. So, with that in mind, Zimbabwe's inflation at its peak reached 6.5, 6 trillion percent. <laughs> or to put it another way, that number has 22 digits. <laughs> it got so Wait, bad that prices doubled every 24 hours. The government tried to solve the problem by printing more and Bruh, are you telling me they're paying 300k for some milk? More money with higher and higher denominations. <laughs> 335 million pounds for some bloody milk. Are you mad? A dollar is sorry. They also say. kept knocking zeros off dollars? the end by revaluing the Zimbabwean dollar three times, going through four different currencies with four different ISO codes. <laughs> Before the final redenomination, they were printing 100 trillion dollar bills. People were literally using wheelbarrows full of cash to buy a loaf of bread. <laughs> the government even made inflation illegal at one point, and people were actually arrested for raising prices. In 2009, the Zimbabwean dollar was abandoned, and to this day, they still have no national currency. Their what? people use currencies such as the US dollar, the pound sterling, and the euro. Really? Before the hyperinflation, the first Zimbabwean dollar was worth about 125 US dollars. If that 100 trillion dollar bill was worth that exchange rate, that single bill would be worth more money than there is in the entire world. <sighs> Twice. Hell. What? 
the fuck? But as ridiculous as this was, this is only considered to be the second worst inflation in history after Jeez. Hungary in 1946. What Although Zimbabwe's yeah. inflation peaked in mid-November of 2008, their overall highest monthly inflation was 79.6 billion percent, whereas Hungary's <laughs> highest monthly inflation, which took place in July 1946, was 41.9 quadrillion percent, with prices doubling every 15 hours. To put that into what perspective, a country fuck? with a healthy inflation rate of around 3%, prices double every 23 years. Their currency was called the Pengo, and as inflation rose, the Bill Pengo was introduced, short for Billion Pengo, which is actually 1 trillion Pengo on the short scale. As well as the record for the highest monthly inflation, Hungary also holds the record for the highest denomination banknote ever issued, the 100 million Bill Pengo note, i.e. 100 million billion, which is 100 quintillion Pengo on the short scale. <laughs> on the One short scale. Pengo notes were printed but never issued. In 1941, the exchange rate was about 5 pengo to 1 US dollar. In 1946, when the currency was discontinued, things had gotten so out of hand that if you took every single banknote in the entire country, they would have a total value of one tenth of a US penny. Of a pe- Of a penny. Of a US pen- Oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought it was going to at least say a dollar. Bro, that, I can't get my head around that. That is absolutely fucking mind-blowing. How do... I mean, I know how it happens, but how? Like, I know how it happens, but still, how? <laughs> Hungary then switched to the forint, where one forint equaled 400 octillion pengo. That number has 29 zeros. <laughs> 29. So that's why governments can't just print money to pay off their debt. It does not end well. <laughs> it's also important to understand exactly what national debt is. National debt is much more complicated than personal debt. It isn't simply a case of you owe people money. Take the country with the highest national debt, the United States, that currently has around $17 trillion of 27 debt. $27 trillion now. And you're probably aware the country that holds most US debt is China. Although that is true, it's somewhat misleading. Of the total debt, China only has about 8%. Most of the debt is actually owned by the United States government itself, by organisations such as Social Security or the Federal Reserve. On top of this, a further 30% is owned by US citizens. And even though 8% of 17 trillion is still a lot, China can't just knock on the door of the White House and demand 1.2 trillion dollars. It doesn't work like that. Basically, the US Department of the Treasury issued Treasury bonds. You can buy these bonds and the government will pay you interest on that bond every year. Then, once the bonds have matured, they'll buy the treasury bond back from you. Now, if a country gets into financial trouble, it may have to default on its debt, which basically means you won't get your money back. But the US is generally considered an extremely risk-free investment because the US dollar is the most widely used and the most trustworthy currency in the world. Okay. It's even written into the constitution that the United States cannot default on its debt. So it kind of invested, China kind of invested in the US, like stocks. You see how stocks are all over the place at the moment. <laughs> It's, it's, it's like, it's like what's the word? Setting for the sort of <laughs> way of the world right now. What was that company? The one that basically just scammed all its sort of middle class or like low income people to make themselves richer. They've been all over the Twitter recently. I forget what the name, name is. I'll leave you with this final thought and what I That's think is possibly though. the best way to sum up no why governments can't just print off unlimited amounts of money. If money grew on trees, it would be as valuable as leaves. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> if it like was leaves, I mean, it's a good way to say that to end it, but wait, what the fuck? This is an interesting one for sure, though. Scoosh, welcome to the Brotherhood, brother. If money grew in trees, it would be valuable as leaves. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's actually quite, it's actually a really good way to put it, to be fair. Ch the Chinese use tea leaves. Wait, what? The funny thing is, money literally does go on trees. I like the conclusion when money was compared to leaves. Everyone's loving that, don't they? What if you print more money but don't tell anyone? That's what I'm thinking, but it's fake, isn't it? They can sort of tell. Inflation will still happen. Your currency will be will skyrocket there. Ill eagle. Exactly what I thought. No, what he should... What he or she could also mean is what if you secretly printed money all by yourself and had all the features but was still a fake note. 
but he'd never told anyone about it and just used it in locations where nobody has any idea about it or checks it or even bothers to find out. You go to jail and the police find out. You will cause inflation the moment you spend it anyways. It's true. It is true. Nobody, me when I was eight, why didn't we print money to get rich in Barway? Let's print, let's print money to become the richest. 100 IQ play, baby. <laughs> just didn't work out. But that, that Zimbabwe and Hungary sort of comparison was ridiculous, though. Like, all the dollars, all the notes in Hungary wouldn't have equaled one-tenth of the US cent. Like, what the f... <laughs> Ridiculous. But, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. More on the way. And, yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.